Well, hey there, everybody. Welcome back to another episode of Joe Wednesdays. This is Jay Hobbs. What's been happening this week? Well, uh, I guess first, like, uh, happy uh, belated Father's Day to all the dads out there watching. Uh, good job. Keep it up. I know it's a rough job sometimes. Trust me, I know. And, uh, and you're doing great. So I hope you had a nice, uh, a nice little holiday there for you guys. Um, so, uh, this, this Father's Day, I did not have to get my wife a car, uh, <laughs> that happened, that was, uh, two years ago that happened, or, uh, she got in an accident and we had to get a new car for her, so that's when we ended up getting it for her two years ago, so that's my, that's my go-to joke against her, it's like, happy Father's Day, I don't need to get you a car, <laughs> Um, but she did, she got me a grill this year, so it's, it's a nice little, like, portable one, um, that's pretty neat, because, because up to now we had, like, one of those little single George Foreman grills, so, I mean, clearly we were not really grilling anything, um, but yeah, so I guess I can add a few points to my man card, because I have a grill now, even though I'm sure I'm way in the negative over the course of my life, so it doesn't really matter, um, but I do have a grill now, so <laughs> we'll be, uh, we'll be learning how to use that. Um, let's see, in, uh, in the Cicada War Saga, um, Lydia decided that she wanted to help me out this weekend. <laughs> see, this is our yard, Cicadas! That's great. She was... She was asking to play outside. We have a little like scooter for her. We have a tricycle for her, that kind of stuff. And and we're trying to get her interested in actually like riding them instead of just like, ooh, I want to play with that. And then she gets on for like five seconds and then is done. We're working on actually like riding those little vehicles that she has. Um, But anytime I've been going out in the last like, you know, month now, uh, I've carried a badminton racket with me, uh, just in case I need to do some swatting, right? Um, well, Lydia has caught on that that's what I'm doing, so she asked if she could play badminton with the cicadas too, and I'm like, yes, yes, that is what I'm doing. I'm playing badminton with the cicadas. You're right. <laughs> And it was, it was actually kind of funny because my mom was following us and I was like, All right, soldiers, we're going to walk into our backyard and claim it back for the Harvard family. And, uh, and Lydia was like, yeah, and she, she was following me with her badminton racket. And we didn't actually have to use it on any because there weren't any around at the time. Um, but we like, you know, we got on our playset and we were like, we have taken back the fort. Yeah and all that stuff and we were having a we were having a really good time until of course the cicada flies up onto lydia's back and lands on her and which point she freaks out she's crying she's like oh i don't like it anymore and we will go back inside so, <laughs> so uh, fun was had but the battle was definitely lost <laughs> Um, uh, alright, let's see, um, so, for this, uh, Father's Day, though, that, I, I don't know if we necessarily planned it this way, but my parents came down to visit, um, over the holiday, and just, mo mostly just to see, see us, cause, uh, when, my, my dad called me up, and he, he was, he, he was talking about wanting to come visit and all that, but then he pointed out, like, the last time that he and Grandma saw Lydia in person, was her birthday last July. And it was like, oh my God, that's been so long. <laughs> like, it's like, God, like we've lost a year. Oh God. So, uh, so needless to say, we were like very uh, eager to reconnect with them. I mean, like even, even just for myself, cause like we didn't, we didn't go home over the, over the like Christmas holiday. Um, and I, I think, um, up to this year I had gone like basically every year of my entire life I spent with my family so it was kind of it's definitely kind of weird to not do that um and to not see my parents in person for so long even though you know we've we've talked on on Facebook messengers and that kind of stuff so I mean like we, we still been in contact but like you know being face to face is is very important for me so you know I was happy to kind of alleviate that a little bit um ooh, pardon me there it went um so yeah, it was a good time, and like, like, obviously the, you know, my concern was that Lydia wasn't going to remember them at all, because I mean, if, 
if you go back a year, like she was only just about to turn two and uh, you know, like who, who knows how much she'll recall versus how much she won't recall. So it's like, will she even remember grandma and grandma and grandpa without being on a screen? Like, will she remember them in person? We didn't know. Um, turned out okay. I mean, she still played the little shy guy routine of holding on to mom and dad and that kind of stuff. But I think uh, grandma and grandpa were a little more willing to come down to her level and kind of interact with her. And I think that kind of helped her open up a little bit. So she she was she was ending up playing with grandma and grandpa a good amount of time before uh, before nap. And then after nap, they 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 they, uh, they headed back home pretty soon after that. So I don't think there was any more playing. There was really just kind of like oh, I'm still waking up. Oh, you guys are still here. Hi. I'm, I'm grumpy because I nap. Mm. So, <laughs> but I think overall she uh, she enjoyed seeing them. We definitely enjoyed having them and catching up and all that kind of stuff. And and Grandma got to do nap time with her, so I'm sure she felt pretty good about that and all of that kind of stuff. So, overall, good visit was had. Um, my dad was talking about something that was kind of funny though. He uh, he started talking about how there are a bunch of uh, roundabouts showing up around i'm not i'm not entirely sure where in this county but like it's just more than usual or like they're just kind of popping up all over the place and uh, i was sitting there i'm like well you know they are statistically safer and he was like wait what and what do you mean and i know and we didn't we ended up not getting being able to finish the conversation because i think lydia woke up from her nap at that point and they kind of cut it off um but you know i was sitting there i'm like well i actually i actually have some civil engineering experience and some knowledge in this category if you want to know so i figure this is probably mostly for him but uh uh so here's here's a quick traffic engineering lesson from a from a professional civil engineer so if you consider a standard four-way intersection you have like north south bound and east west bound right you start off you say you're heading north you have three turning actions you can do you, when you get to the intersection. You can continue going straight, you can turn right, and you can turn left. Those are like your options of what you can do at the intersection. So if you're turning right, you have to at least cross the eastbound lane, right? If you're going straight, you have to cross the eastbound and westbound lanes of traffic. And if you're turning left, you have to cross east and westbound as well as crossing southbound. So just from one lane, you have six points of conflict in an intersection. Multiply that by the four different lanes that you have going to a single intersection means you have 24 points of potential conflict and accidents. Um, so that is why statistically roundabouts are much safer than a standard intersection because with a roundabout if you have the same four lanes coming to a roundabout instead of a you know normal intersection you've reduced the number of points of conflict down to four because everybody's going to turn onto that circle and you only have to join that circle from one single turning action that's all you have available to you to go into it and then once you're into it one turning out of it there's no intersection from opposing traffic when you're turning out so statistically a roundabout has so many a significantly less number of points of conflict versus a standard intersection that you see less accidents as a result or at least the and and a greater greater reduction in like life threatening accidents because another benefit for for roundabouts as far as safety is concerned is that it kind of forces you to slow down because like if you have a green light and you're going straight through a standard intersection you don't have to slow down you don't have to change your rate of speed at all with a roundabout you're going to have to at least slow down a little bit to make an appropriate turn you can't just blaze through it without causing problems for your own car um, <clears throat> obviously there's no way to make an intersection that's completely 100% accident proof because, you know, people are stupid. Uh, <laughs> honestly, that's what it is. I mean, like you're, you're dealing with people as part of the equation and you know, you can't, you know, you can't engineer stupid. Um, so, uh, but yeah, so, so that's what a, uh, a standard roundabout looks like. Now I, I know 
in you know within the recent years uh in traffic engineering i don't know i don't know how recent but like they've gone to like multiple lane roundabouts and that kind of stuff so you do increase the number of conflicts with those and it does require a little more knowledge of for on the drivers to know how to navigate through one like that um however there's still you know there's still a greater reduction of points of conflict versus a standard intersection um and obviously once once you start adding lanes to an intersection it gets all the more complex anyway so i mean like like if you added two lanes to a standard intersection versus one lane in each direction i mean the the number of conflicts of potential conflicts just explodes um and the only other thing i was thinking of that like there are so before the pandemic construction was started on the exit nearest my work off the highway and once once the pandemic was over and we started driving to work i i you know my first time heading back to work and actually driving down there i was like oh my god this intersection is entirely different um i don't know if you've heard about it i don't know if this is their technical name for it but they actually have like they've been developing these diamond intersections and they're 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 kind of they're they're definitely weird because they they're they're in no way shape or form looking like a traditional intersection and if you're not if you're not aware of what they're doing they can be really confusing to see because they actually take like a two lanes traffic going opposite directions crisscrosses them before there's highway traffic coming into them it it crosses them has them go across the bridge or goes across the highway and then once they've passed the highway, they'll crisscross back out and put the lanes back to where they started. And honestly, like if, if again, like if you don't know what you're looking at, you're like, why in the hell are they doing this? And but honestly, it, it, it goes right back to what I was talking about earlier, where they're reducing the number of points of conflict at any given crossing. So they cross the north southbound traffic once so that there's only the conflicts of those two to contend with at that intersection and then pushes them forward crossed and then the incoming traffic off the highway if they're going right they just go right into the lane that they has been pushed over and then if they're going left they go to the opposite side of before the crisscross so there's there's the oncoming traffic doesn't have to contend with any northbound or any um, crisscrossing traffic anymore. They only just have to get into the lane they want to turn into. And it does that on all four entrances to the on and off the highway. So um, obviously they're a little more convoluted than, than what a roundabout would look like, but they're actually, they're actually pretty neat from an engineering perspective. They're actually really neat. Um, definitely comp more complicated so as a driver you definitely need to be you know paying attention and have you know have a little bit of patience if it's a new area on letting people learn how to drive through it and that kind of stuff but um but it's actually pretty uh, a pretty neat uh infrastructure development so um but but that's just me geeking out as an engineer about it <laughs> so um, all right, I've rambled on long enough for today. I uh, hope you guys have a good week, and uh, we'll see you next time. Till then, take care.